Creating database availability group in Exchange Server 2016 is the same as creating in Exchange Server 2013. There are some exceptions. Uh, technically, it's been more sound, more efficient. Microsoft now recommends you to create IP less tag. And if you recall, in Exchange 2013, we need an administrative endpoint inside failover cluster, which is no longer required. As far as the number of mailbox databases and number of copies are concerned, these limits as of this moment is exactly the same. DAG has been introduced in, since Exchange 2010, and this is how I, we will achieve in our lab. Uh, the best practice definitely is to use a load balancer, a hardware load balancer or a virtualized load balancer. But in my lab, I don't have a load balancer, so what I will do, I will use DNS round robin for client access service proxy, which is now part of mailbox server role. We will form a DAC using Exchange 1 and Exchange 2. Exchange 1 or EX1 will be hosting the active copy of the databases. We have three databases. And EX2 will hold passive copy of databases. In addition to that, we have one server called file server. This server needs to have a file server role installed. And this server will be configured as file share witness for our DAG. Here we are in Exchange Admin Center. As you can see, right now we have two Exchange server, EX1 and EX2. And we need to form a DAG. For that purpose, I will switch to another server over here, which is my domain controller. And as I said, we will use DNS round robin for client access server proxy. And DNS round robin is enabled by default. All I have to do is to create another host record for my namespace. In my namespace, I have OWA, which is pointing to one of my server. And my internal and external directory are, are set to this address, uh, this uh, host name. So now I will create another host record that points to EX2. Keep this in mind if you're using hardware load balancer, then here you will define just one address host address, and that will point to the logical IP address of your hardware load balancer. So we have set for DNS round robin. Now let's move on or let's switch to file server. This is the file server. And if we are using a server as part of file share witness for Exchange DAG, one of the requirement is we need to add Exchange Trusted Subsystem group into local administrator scrub. It's a normal server with two gigs of RAM, with file server role installed. It's part of a domain. I disable the firewall in case if the firewall is enabled in your case. Make sure you allow file and printer sharing. I'll go to groups, local administrators and I will add Exchange Trusted Subsystem group from my Active Directory into this local administrator's group. So this is it. The group has been added. So we have done all the prerequisites for uh, witness. And let's move on uh, to our Exchange server. Just I want to show you, yeah, see the file server option, it's there, yeah. File and share, st file and storage services option. It means the file server role is installed, which is a requirement. 
for file share witness. File server role plus exchange trusted subsystem in local admin group. If the witness server is not an exchange server. Uh, all right, so we have now everything set. So we have these three databases I said earlier, two for mailboxes, user mailboxes, and the third one for public folder mailboxes. So I will go to database availability groups. And currently we have none. So let's create one. I will call it, let's say DAG1. Witness server, here I can specify name of our file share witness. So in my case, it's file server. Witness directory, I would like witness directory to be created with this name under C drive. The setup will automatically create this directory. So you don't have to worry about creating it manually. And that's it. I will not add any IP address here. And that's what Microsoft recommends, starting with Exchange 2016. IP less DAG is recommended. So we'll wait for it. And here, here it is, our DAG. So DAG has been created but currently it has no member servers. If I go to the properties of DAG, uh, I'll just, let me just show some, okay. Right now let's add some members. We can do add members like this. Uh, so let's add EX1 and EX2. And now what, when, I, when we will add members to DAG, what it will do, it will add a uh, failover clustering feature uh, to both exchange nodes. And it's all transparent. You don't have to do anything. So it's been done. So I'll click close. And as you can see, we have two members. EX1 and EX2. Our witness server is also defined here. All right. Now, let's do something which is go to the properties of DAG. This is the right time to go. And here, as you can see, we, all the members and IP address. This is I wanted to show you earlier. See, there is no IP. It's broadcast address. And that's what Microsoft recommends. IP less DAG. Okay. So what we have now? We have a DAG with two members. Another thing we need is databases. We need to add database copies. So I'll move to database and what I will do, I will simply add database copy for employees DB. Currently it's on EX1. I will add EX2. I'm not using lagging for the log file. And that's it. As you can see now, employees DB has two copies. 
EX1 and EX2. Right? See? Passive copy is on EX2. Let's do this for executives DB as well. I will like to keep passive copy on EX2. Well, I have just two servers, right? In my case, EX1 is, uh, sorry, EX2 is hosting the passive copy of databases which residing on EX1. And it can be why it can do it can be configured vice versa. For example, EX2 may have some databases, active databases, and EX1 can host passive copies for those databases as well. So let's do this for public folders DB to have some redundancy for our good old public folders. It's a mailbox database, as I said earlier in public folder uh, video. You create public folders inside public folder mailbox, and public folder mailbox is, is, it's, it is, uh, resides inside public uh, mailbox database. So this way we achieve high availability for public folders using DAG because public folders we define inside mailbox database. Good. So we have defined additional copies for all these three databases. Some of them healthy, yeah, good. We can see details here. It is showing some uh, error message, but uh, don't worry about it. It's just it's just a matter of time, and it will be fine. Currently, it's seeding those databases, and we can verify it from here as well as we can see it manually. I will show you how. If you recall, we have E drive for exchange databases and L for logs, right? And we had certain folder structure for our Exchange Server EX1. And we will see now. That does it exist on EX2 or not? It's showing healthy, but content index is failed. It should be OK for a while. Trust me, just Give, we, we will give it some, some some time and we can also do some verification okay the first one content index state healthy uh, okay let's go to ex2 and e drive yeah those folders are there and let's go inside these folders yep good so database has successfully seeded you see there is a database file there and it has some uh, weight to it it's not an empty 0 kb or 0 kb file or something uh, it's ex2 by the way just to let you know i'm not checking it on ex1 See, this folder structure has been created. Now, we are on EX1, and you can see the folder structure is exactly matching. And, and file size is almost the same. So it means the database has been successfully seeded. All database files have been seeded. Uh, let's see, logs. Are they getting populated? Yes. 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 
this is course let's go to this is where we need to see it. logs are getting populated because this is ex2 yes 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 so it's receiving logs as well so let's go back to exchange admin center on ex1 refresh employees db healthy healthy and healthy see content index state was failed earlier now it's healthy and for public folder still failed just in a while and we will check again let's refresh okay let's just wait for a couple of minutes so let's check now let's see employees db has no problem public folder db here yeah, healthy uh, it's just a matter of time basically because first thing first what it does it seeds the database and the database size is big it takes a while after that log file will be replayed you know uh, and then the log file will be uh, it will start syncing log files with with the source server so all this process takes time because once the database has been seeded you know exchange creates log files and then those log files will will, will be replicated to destination server uh, so this is it our DAG is functional and thank you for watching.